BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you considered renting a car to take that family trip versus using your own car? According to AAA, it costs 50 cents per mile to operate a car. If you are planning a long trip, renting may be the better option. If you do rent a car before you take your trip, check with your auto insurer and credit card issuer to see what coverage they provide. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a Farmers customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a Farmers Home Policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, Steve, I don't know, man. Uh, Ever since you joined TikTok. Yes. Yeah, I mean. Danny just joined TikTok, I saw. You were on before Danny. I did. That's insane. Oh, yeah. I'm on top of these things, man. I'm, I'm like, why are the kids? The, the people talk about those kids. You're on top of the talk. Yeah. Man. But yeah, I've done zero on TikTok, though. I've just posted videos of my child. Oh, I got a new thing for you, man. Okay, what's that? Uh, it's uh, a new TikTok thing, and it is um, uh, basically using a nail file to reshape your teeth. Weird. I tried this. Oh, what? What? Okay. I, I tried this when I was a kid. Cause I got made Did fun you of really? Me. Well, because I made, I made fun of my big teeth and all that. So I was like, you know, <laughs> Mom, can I borrow your nail file? And she's like, well, what do you need it for? And I said what I was going to do, and she told me I was an idiot, and she would not give it to me. So oh. I never got to really do it. Yeah. But then she brought me to the dentist, and they actually did it because it was like they were a little bit longer. And it was like, why don't you just ask us? We would ask the dentist to do it because they, they can do that for you. And I was like, oh, I was too embarrassed to bring it up. <laughs> So they actually did file your teeth down? A little bit. Yeah, not a lot, but enough to make it where I was like, okay, I'm uh, way more at peace with these now. These oh, things. wow. All right. Yeah. That's, I didn't realize they could do it because people are doing it on their own and dentists are not happy about it. Yeah, because yeah. apparently like even my dentist, when he, like, he also echoed what my mom said that I was an idiot for even thinking of trying to do that because like, you can only go so far before you start hitting stuff that could be a potential issue. Yeah, it's hurting my teeth just thinking about that right now. Like yeah. hitting a root or something by accident? Something, ah. yeah. Yeah, they're... Uh, Oh, yeah, there's an author, orthodontist. His name is uh, Ben Winters. Uh, he saw these TikTok videos and he's like, yeah, you don't want to do this. This is really risky. This is actually something we do. It's called enamoplasty, okay? And us as dentists and orthodontists, we do this with a lot of people, okay? But you need to know specifics before you can do stuff like this. Can't do this by herself with a, with a nail. It looks like she has a nail file she's using to do it. Everybody has a set amount of enamel, okay? And that set amount of enamel, once you go through it, you hit your nerve and blood and pain and nastiness. It's just terrible. You don't want that. Mm-mm. No. Uh, I almost did that. <laughs> Jeez, dude. I'm so glad my mom was... I just Quick to tell me how stupid I am. I, 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 I yeah, I guess there's just a, a lack of knowledge of what your tooth is to think that oh, this is just a a solid hard thing through and through. So what's the problem? I mean, I, yeah, I, honestly, when I was a kid, I thought oh yeah, it's probably like a ton of like hard tooth part before you even get to the nerves. That's I, what in my mind I was thinking. Not, this is not a. This doesn't seem too crazy. Yeah, do people even know they got nerves in their teeth? Because that's why I would never mess with it. Because right. just try a piece of aluminum on mm. on, a, on your filling. Stop, and don't, do that. Stop. don't do that. Mm-mm. No, oh, God. you'll know that you got nerves in there. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and after that happened, I've never been more cautious about opening anything with tinfoil on it. Like if it's like a, a, a chocolate bar, like a, a crunch bar. I think that's when it happened. I bit into like a crunch bar with the tinfoil. Oof. And it was just like, oh. Now, here's what I'm wondering, though. 
I wonder, I, I, I thought it was the fillings, the, the, the metal fillings that used to conduct that kind of pain. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, since they don't use metal fillings anymore, maybe that doesn't happen. And I, don't maybe that, I don't want to find out. Well, yeah. if someone doesn't have metal fillings and they have the other type of fillings, give it a whirl. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not doing it either. But I'm, I, it just makes me think that if that phenomenon's not happening, mm-hmm. maybe okay. that's why people think there's nothing in there that to hurt their teeth. I don't know, man. But uh, as soon as you say something's a, a TikTok fad i instantly <laughs> think it's something of somebody doing something stupid yeah well, like, um, i don't know many tiktok fads that are like harmless it yeah. seems except for the one where it's like all of a sudden like i saw danny did the one where it's like you're dressed up looking serious and then something happens and all of a sudden you're dressed silly yeah or i've seen ones where girls are just wearing like their pajamas no makeup and they do like a move and then all of a sudden sexy but that, that i'm okay with sarah oh, did one like yeah. that actually i think she, wait sarah's on tiktok i believe so oh, or she did like, no. some, oh maybe not i thought she did a <laughs> wine one where like they handed off the wine maybe not she might have done it on one of the other ones like yeah. reels or i do like reels yeah that's, oh what i don't even Instagram. know what the hell reels is it's, Look, we it, told you about this it's instagram's yeah. well. instagram's a, a, attempt at uh, doing TikTok. Oh, no, it's it's okay. So it's uh, Insta Talk mm-hmm. is basically what it is. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Well, I haven't used that either. Have I? I don't know. Maybe I have. Sarah puts the camera in front of me a lot every morning. So, I don't know what I'm using. I like the text says, oh, so let them do it. Let Darwin happen. <laughs> That's the thing. Sometimes you do stupid things and you learn r- rather quickly. You were an idiot. It's a yeah. valuable lesson. Yeah, in it's life. life experience. I like that. I like knowing where the idiots are right off the bat. <laughs> Oh, someone says I have both metal and enamel fillings. It hurts like hell on both, okay. according to Nick. Ooh, oh, okay. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick, for doing something for science. Isn't that weird that enamel also is a conductor of that? I don't understand mm. why. Or if you guys already the metal ones in there. Well, metal, you know what I mean? Like if he already has the other fillings in there that in addition to the enamel ones, maybe they're still zinging him. Yeah, I'd like I to try. Know. I'd like someone to try it who only has enamel just, and then give us their enamel. report. Yeah. yeah. And that way we can know for sure. Put it on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, please. Put it on TikTok. And of course, we didn't ask you to do it because we don't endorse this We could call it I'm Stupid and This Hurts Challenge. That's pretty much TikTok, isn't it? <laughs> and Jackass. I think that's where it all started. They were professionals, weren't they? <laughs> Hi, yeah. this is Johnny Knoxville, well, and this is TikTok. Yes, they were paid to do stupid <laughs> stuff. So, yes, they were professionals. <laughs> they were professionals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Johnny I mean, Knoxville, and this is TikTok. I think, yeah, I think really this is amazing. Way. I'd watch that every day. Would you really? Straight oh, up, yeah, yeah I would. Right. Yeah, okay. they're short form, so you can just see it and then move on with yeah, your day. It's like ten seconds. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, why hasn't Steve O? Maybe is Steve O on TikTok? It feels like that whole jackass crew. It's it's made for them. Well, Steve O's busy duct taping taping himself to a billboard in Los Angeles yeah, like to promote whatever he's doing. Right. Right. Yeah, which should be like his new TikTok. Is it a channel? Do they call it a channel or is it a is it a talker? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm going to look into that, BJ. I'm really trying no, to figure out. Open you... up the stupid TikTok again. Yeah, look it up. See what you call it. Is it a, I don't know what they call it. Yeah. Well, while you're doing that, let me tell you about <laughs> Thursday Night Football. Last night, the limited number of fans did something that definitely wouldn't be considered social distancing, and they got kicked out because of it. Steve will tell you all about it. He's got the Migs report for you at 617. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Auto insurance is probably one of your larger expenses, so periodically take some time to see if it can be reduced. Check for discounts for paying in full versus monthly installments. Consider a higher deductible, improve your credit score, and lastly, don't be afraid to shop around. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. With Farmers, you could get savings just for becoming a customer. It's a little extra something. So to tell you about it, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Precious baby giggles. (laughs) When you switch to Farmers, you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. And that's a whole lot of something, baby. Ah, get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21, underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Migs Report.
Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Mercedes-Benz of Seattle for giving us the Migs Report. And it's the day of all days. I feel like we just celebrated this day, but I don't care. I'll celebrate it again. It's National Cheeseburger Day. Yeah. Oh, it was National Double Cheeseburger yeah, this Day. Yeah, just the singles. Oh, okay. So <laughs> instead of getting the Double Whopper with cheese, you just get a regular Whopper with cheese. Yeah, you get two for five bucks, though. Yeah. If it wasn't uh, a tasty burger, I would really call foul on this double and single cheeseburger. But it oh, is a cheeseburger. Right. I mean, what do you want? you want to celebrate World Bamboo Day? Oh, I like bamboo. Oh, I do too, nice. but I mean, yeah. they grow fast. It's great. But, oh, bamboo's you know. a great tree. It's a great fence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's also National Concussion Awareness Day. So well, shout out to Conky the... from uh, the Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like National Cheeseburger Day is the best one to go with. All right. But, but you, I love Conky, though. Oh, uh, Conky's the best. Yeah. Uh, somebody saw, did a little survey about like different comfort foods. And uh, burgers was at the, towards the top of the list at number two. What do you think is the number one comfort food when it comes to uh, people just trying to, like, you know, eat bad and feel good about it? Ooh. Pasta. Pasta. Yeah. Good call. Well, mac and cheese has pasta in it, but that's number five. So you are... Wrong. Oh, I was going to say mac and cheese, too. Okay. Well, well BJ, I, you are also then. Wrong. I know that. I said I was going to. I, you gave I should get another guess. <laughs> fine, fine. You can have another guess. What is it, BJ? Uh, oh, uh, comfort food? Yes. I am going to go with mac and cheese. Hmm. Wrong. Ah, uh, dang it. All right. What about you, Rev? French fries. French oh, fries, number four. One. Nice. Oh, that's only number four? Yeah. It should be higher. All right. What do you think it is, Danny? Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Yeah. Ooh. Fried chicken is at number 10. Wrong. Oh, which is, I mean, shocking because, of course. I like fried chicken. Right? It's also shocking because I saved you for last because I figured you'd get it right. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Dang it. Hey, yeah. Yeah, that was right. See, that's I don't right. think of pizza as comfort food. Well, people do. Just what, what, what do you think it is? Delicious? Well, that's what comfort, comfort food, food is. is. But yeah, but like chicken, I don't know. You're having a rough day when you want to just crush a whole pie? That's true, actually. A pizza. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly, I mean, it is the ultimate, I, and I feel embarrassed I didn't guess pizza. Number three is ice cream. Oh, yeah. Then we got cookies at number seven. Yeah, Potato baby. chips are number six. Mm-hmm. Chocolate at number eight. Mm -hmm. And then cereal things. at number nine. Cereal, oh. I don't really feel is comfort food. That's oh. just breakfast. Oh, it's hella comforting after you're hungover after a long <laughs> night. All right, fair. I, I, I got to give a shout out to uh, to J Rubs. What, what did he do? He ordered a case of Utz, and you know Utz branch uh, chips, don't you, Steve, from the Northeast? No idea. You never heard of UTZ Utz? I thought, you know, maybe it's a Maryland thing and not so, but I could have sworn it was also in New York, too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not very familiar with that. Oh, wow. Well, I, I saw it on Mad Men, so that's, I remember that whole brand. It was, it, it's definitely an old school brand of chips, but they've got Utz crab flavored potato chips. What? And they're really good. Uh -huh. I think the guys in the men's room had them in the studio one, or in the, in the office one day because somebody mailed it to them. I think it is a Maryland thing. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Well, they're good. And, 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 and J Rubs immediately came up the stairs and said, Hey man, I just got a whole case of these. <laughs> that doesn't sound tasty. Not at all. Oh, it's good. Well, yeah. I guess yeah. someone needs to bring them in so we can be the the judge of that. Yeah, you know, Sarah, maybe uh, Jay Rubs will uh, give up a couple of bags so we can do a taste test. All right, good. She's giving the big thumbs up. Yeah, I didn't want to take it without his you know permission. No, I that, that would be wrong. That's very nice of you. Yeah, since a, it's comfort food day, I thought I'd throw it out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of want to try him. Yesterday was Thursday Night Football. I don't know if you guys were watching. Thursday Night but it was Football! A, it was a battle between Cleveland and Cincinnati. Really? The Ohio showdown. And people care because? Because there was no other football to watch. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. So the Browns ended up beating the Cincinnati Bengals 35-30. to 30. Uh, Baker Mayfield looked pretty good last night. Had a big touchdown pass uh, during the game. Uh, Joe Burrow, a lot of people were paying attention to because he was the number one pick and he's with the Bengals. Uh, quarterback didn't uh, do as well, obviously, as uh, Baker Mayfield. But the big talk of the game... Huh. Man, you got the social distancing going on. So at the game, they decide, you know what? We're going to allow a limited number of people to come to this game. It was in Cleveland, right? Okay. So you, the way they did it is kind of interesting. They have all the seats. They zip-tied the seats that they don't want anybody to sit in. That way you can't, like, move around and sit in different seats along those lines. All right. So they want to, you know, make sure everyone was socially distant from each other. Here's the problem. You've got the Cleveland fans. You've got the Cincinnati fans. Big rivalry. And it doesn't stop them from fighting. There was a big brawl oh, wow. during the game. Are you Which is just me? awesome. What a bunch of morons. Right? I mean, it's like, how does that even happen if you're distant from each other? They have all that space to fight. They yeah. have all that space to heckle each other. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> well, congratulations. It's the first fan fight of the year.
Yeah, and I feel like look, Joe Brown. People are losing their minds. So with any opportunity to really vent this, to, to vent like that, that's what's going to happen. They just wanted to punch somebody. Yeah, yeah there's six thousand fans there, which is about ten percent of the capacity uh, during that game. So that's what happened with that. Uh, a lot of weird stuff happening in the world of sports yesterday. Uh, one of them being during a Chicago Cubs game against the Cleveland Indians when a drone just landed on the field. What? I guess people want to watch the game. They can't go to the game, so they send their drone there. Oh, that makes sense. They actually had to have a, a delay of game because of a drone. Uh, it was right in the middle of, uh, like, right around center field. I think one of the players just ran up with a bat and just smashed the thing. Wow. That's so weird because in Chicago, you can really watch from buildings and everything. Like, that's all. That's what they're known for is people can watch from the surrounding buildings at Wrigley. I wonder if there was, like, somebody in those seats that, like, sit in the apartment complexes, like, that are right by Wrigley Field and they have, like, the bleachers up above. I wonder if it was somebody there that was just drunk. It's like, I'll go get my drone. We'll fly it in there. I, I think you're absolutely right. It was a seven-minute delay because of this stupid drone. Yeah. Uh, Mariners need a drone to delay their games. Oh, Jeez. is it happening? Well, they were winning, and the next thing you know, they lose the game to San Francisco. Oh, six to four. They're now three games back from uh, second place in the AL West. That's not because, looking good. No, that's not good. They play San Diego tonight, so hopefully they crush them. That would be nice. Sounders are going to be playing tonight against L.A. Football Club. Woo. That's at home, so, uh, you know, uh, suck on some oxygen, boys. Because, you know, it's <laughs> the air and stuff. But uh, I am surprised they're playing. I, I really, really, uh, the air quality is not going to be good. Why do they get, why are they doing that? Because Brad Smith is back. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Oh, okay. And they're not going to stop because now they got Brad back on the team, which is a big deal, right, Danny? Oh, yeah. I'm super stoked about it. We needed a good He was on there. loan? Yeah, he was on loan to like, like a year and team. team and so now he's back. I don't understand that either. How do you have a star player when you're in a season just be like, I'm going to be loaned out? He's been on loan for months. Yeah, for the, almost the entire season. And that's then, what I, I don't get. It. You're really now. good. You shouldn't play with us. Go play with a better team. I, I, I don't. I, well, his it, contract was up here, so he left, went to do a different one, and then they brought him back. Oh, okay. So his contract was up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because on loan sounds like he's still with us and we're just letting him have him. Yeah, that's what, from what I understand anyway. Well, in Little League, I was on loan a lot of times when the other team didn't have enough players. <laughs> really? I thought you were alone when you were playing in the league. Just they put you as far <laughs> away as they could for everybody. I was the guy when the other team didn't have enough players. They're like, yeah, yeah. let's give him our worst player. Steve. Here's Steve. You're playing with the Dodgers today. Oh, and you're like, that's the. Is, that, is there a worse feeling in the world to know that your team just gave you up like that? It sucked, but I'm going to tell you something that was awesome about it as a quick aside, because it was the greatest moment of my entire Little League life. It was one of the times where I felt like I was like finally fitting in with this team. It actually turns out now he's my brother's father-in-law, the, the coach, and he's just like, look, Steve, you're going to have to go play with the Dodgers. We were the Yankees, right? And I'm like, I was so mad because I'm the catcher, and I'm like, all right, fine. Eh. So now I'm going to be the catcher for the Dodgers. Mind you, I'm a terrible hitter. I'm a terrible Little Leaguer. That game, I had a double a triple, and I got somebody out at home plate. Wow! That must mean your team, the, the, your Yankee team was not good. Oh, I, I was also pissed. Oh. It, it was a combo platter of our team not being all that great at that time, I guess. Maybe people taking me lightly, like the pitcher, who was his son. Oh. Oh, man, dude, I had such a chip on my shoulder. But after the game, oh, man, he was so mad at me. Because <laughs> I beat them. Like, I yeah. helped. Like, the Dodgers were like, can we keep him? And he's like, No. <laughs> How about that? That doesn't show them to get, let, just give you up like that. But then I went back to sucking again. See, they got to piss you off. That's the key. That was the ingredient. Keep me on the Dodgers. Yeah. That was a great moment. That's so that's, that's my motivator that my, to piss you off. That was my only moment in Little League where I felt like I actually was worth a damn. Isn't that fascinating? It was weird. It's weird because that's like you've never said you've had any success in Little League at all. BJ had zero success in Little League. <laughs> yeah. That was the only bright spot in like Ooh. the six years of playing Little League for me. Wow. That's awesome. When I helped another team beat my team. I mean, I helped my team lose when I was on the team. Well, that is, see, that's, that's a poetic. whole other level, that though. That is poetic. <laughs> it was so great. It was like kind of a movie. Yeah. I don't know what kind of movie, a bad one, but still, yeah. it was pretty awesome. Uh, NHL Stanley Cup Finals are now set because the Lightning beat the New York Islanders 2-1 oh, to one in sorry. overtime. Oh, Winning that man. series four games to two, so unfortunately, Matt Barzell. The Lightning seem to be the king of overtime. They had a lot of overtime victories yes. in the playoffs. So now they're going to be taking on the Dallas Stars in the Stanley Cup Finals. That's Woo! right, Dallas and Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup Finals. It starts tomorrow. I'm rooting for the Dallas Stars. Me, me and why? Anton Hudobin, who is their goalie, he was their backup. Their main goalie, Ben Bishop, got injured. So he stepped in during the playoffs and has been like pretty much unstoppable. He's, and he's, he's, a lot of people say he's the like 
stereotypical beer league goalie. He just looks disheveled all the time. He's nice. not really in all that great of shape. Loves eating crawfish after games. Like he's yeah. just like a party guy. And I also love after they beat the uh, Vegas Golden Knights to go into the Stanley Cup Finals. You know, a lot of teams do this in sports where, like, in the locker room, they'll make somebody the player of the game or the player of the series, and they give them a ceremonial like helmet or jersey or jacket. Well, with the Dallas Stars, it's like a chain and a pendant that has the Dallas Stars logo on it. So they give it to Anton, and his uh, big speech to the team is just priceless. <laughs> I gotta give it to the f-ing Russian machine. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going home! That's right. We're not going home, BJ. Anton is a man of many words. <laughs> I love how I, was like, I almost hear a pin drop. Yeah. Hey, what's he going to say? What's he going to say? We're not going home. Oh, that's awesome. So that all starts tomorrow. Uh, Seahawks are playing Sunday, Sunday night football oh, against yeah. the Cam Newton-led New England Patriots. It's so bizarre. Yes. I but cannot wait to it's see bizarre. Joe on Monday, as he's sad, because the Seahawks beat them. Yeah, it's so bizarre because we face Cam Newton, and it's weird just, you know, I was seeing him last week in a Patriot uniform. It's just so weird, like somebody else's quarterback, and it, but it's somebody we know. Yeah? Oh, yeah. no, it's a guy that they've played against many times yeah. in the regular season. So it should be a fun one. Sunday night again, they can watch that with the NBC. Uh, and it's at home, but of course you can't go. Oh, you mean we can't have a fight in the stands like uh, Cleveland? No, I mean oh. I guess we can just like tweet mean things to each other. Yeah, we'll do that. Instead. Okay. Uh, today we're gonna have a high of sixty six degrees. Still, the weather is unhealthy, and that's the main report. And that's what's up. That is what's up. That's so weird. Yeah. Several celebrities uh, took part in a table read of Fast Times at Ridgemont High last night on Facebook Live. Table reads are becoming uh, a real popular thing since, uh, you know, actors aren't really doing a whole lot with uh, Corona. And a table read is usually like the pre sort of let's just get used to the script. Let's get used to what's going on. The flow. Uh, yeah. A lot of movies and television uh, shows will do this at some point before they start actually filming episodes or the movie. They'll do table reads and uh, it's become popular to see actually people do do it rather than actually do the, the show itself. Oh, this is cool. So, yeah, they have them like all via like a Zoom kind of a thing, and they just get a whole bunch of different random celebrities to read iconic moments in films. So, they had a, a Dane Cook was a part of this, John Legend, Ray Liotta, Sean Penn, Morgan Freeman. Look at that. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, Shia LaBeouf. Oh, man. Matthew uh, McConaughey. And of course, Fast, Fast Times at Richmond High. Fast Times at Richmond High had a very iconic scene uh, with Phoebe Cates and Judge Reinhold. And the best part about this is, you know, who they they had playing that because it's like the part where a Judge is like taking care of himself while watching care TV. Taking care of business, and she and walks in. Well, yeah. Oh, it's a classic moment. But they had two people who were divorced do the lines for that. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt. How great is that? Which you know, it's I mean, it's great because you know, at some point she's seen him do a Judge Reinhold. Oh, we think. Yeah. Well, I would imagine at some point she saw Judges Reinhold and say, you know, Brad's pit. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's funny. No, but I didn't know if like, she ever saw him going rink, 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 oh, by yeah, himself. That, that I don't know. That I have no idea. We should uh, ask her next time we talk to her. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question for both of them. So Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt, actually doing a table read of that famous scene with Phoebe Cates and uh, walking in on Judge Reinhold uh, during Fast Times at Richmond with, High. With Morgan Freeman doing the narration. Hey, Brad, do you have any cute... The Dave dream evaporates and we see a real life again with an interior Brad bathroom angle on Linda's face. In the doorway of Brad's bathroom as she watches the sight before her. Angle on Brad, trying to cover himself and act nonchalant and keep his back turned at the same time. The words barely escape his mouth. Wait, just a, a minute. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I, I did not know anybody was in here. Linda turns, goes immediately as if she wants to forget what she just saw as quickly as possible. She closes the door behind her. Doesn't anybody knock anymore? And that brings us to our second break. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing that they make a lot of money as actors. Yeah. Right? It, it, well, yeah. <laughs> they all sounded like they never acted before in their life. Yeah, it really was... Uh, Boy, yeah, Morgan Freeman, they do a lot. To, uh, he must have a lot of takes. There's a lot of takes. And doing something live is very different than doing multiple takes. And there are actors that are really good at live performance, and there are actors that need multiple, multiple, multiple takes in order to have, it, and have the editor make them look better. When we were doing our live uh, our live happy hours a while back on Facebook, BJ did a better acting job oh, than I thank he you. did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
going to put that out there if you want to go check those out. There was like zero effort in that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm very much not impressed. And is something going on with Morgan Freeman that I don't know about? I think it's false teeth. Okay, because it sounded like maybe he was like sipping on some whiskey, maybe. Probably. I, I know. I mean, it'd be rude, but like, didn't it almost sound like he was slurring a little bit? Well, that's why. I mean, people that have new teeth, that's what they sound like when they're older and they get new teeth. Though you now can get implants, and so if it, 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 it's like that, used to be denture talk. That's what I used to call it, or like at least veneers, or new teeth talk. It could be the new veneer talk too. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's got some brand new teeth. Oh, that's what it is then. Boy, I uh, that that's that's the thing then. Yeah. It's interesting because I yeah. never really remember looking at Morgan Freeman being like, man, that guy needs some new teeth. No, I, I don't remember that. But, but see, everybody's I, got their own insecurities, I'd imagine. I think in Hollywood now, Steve, you've got to have the whitest of whites no matter what. And look, I've got decent teeth. I go to the dentist all the time and the dentist tells me, dude, your teeth are in great shape. I've never smoked. Uh, oh. Yeah, I do drink coffee. And, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I guess he did that. I have never early adjustments. Yeah, I never once paid attention to Brian's teeth. But now hearing that, I got, okay, I don't look yeah, at his teeth. Yeah, yeah, his teeth, I guess, weren't perfect after all. So he got new teeth. Somebody says uh, Shia LaBeouf was a complete ass show at Spicoli. Uh, of course they had Shia play Spicoli. Oh, Spicole. yeah. Kind of it's either sense. him or McConaughey. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. That would have been interesting. Yeah, that's. Um, that's not the greatest acting. I hate to say it. I'm with Danny on this one. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. What is the name of the main dragon in the animated movie How to Train Your Dragon? Puff. No. <laughs> uh, angry. No. Oh, wow. Uh, um, <laughs> geez. Lilo. No. Uh, I don't know. It should be Puff the Angry da- Dragon. That's my new <laughs> song right there. I've watched that. Uh, oh, dear. The correct answer, of course, was Toothless. You want a shot at beating Steve, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on the rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, there's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and, and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or, or bankruptcy. Uh, there's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney and right my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy my job is to help you to to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you what benefits it's going to have for you and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is thanks travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com BECU.